Hi there, my name is Rob Clifton, and I'm a program manager at Google. My career in IT started about 17 years ago. At the time, my IT knowledge was mainly self-taught. I took certificate courses much like this one and learned as much as I could along the way while I continued to go to college part-time to get an associate's degree. Finding that first job wasn't easy. I had to convince someone to take a chance on me, even though I had no degree and no advanced education in IT. I applied for a lot of jobs, got a few interviews, received a lot of rejections, and eventually landed my first job fixing computers at a big box retailer. Over the next few years, I jumped around to different jobs, gaining more experience while I continued to go to school and finish my degree. I eventually landed at Google as a support tech in our Ann Arbor office. 12 years later, I now lead the hiring efforts for our junior IT support roles. I've interviewed hundreds of candidates, and I help train our interviewers on how to find the best talent in the industry. Today, I'm excited to share what I've learned to help you prepare for your next interview. Going into an interview is a moment that lots of people dread. We're all afraid that we could say something wrong, that we're not ready for that next step, or just that we'll be rejected. These are all normal feelings, but it helps to look at the interview as an opportunity. It's an opportunity for you to hone your interpersonal skills, learn more about the company, and make sure that the job is a good fit for you. It's an opportunity to advance your career and gain more work experience. During these lessons, we'll give you some tips that'll help you prepare for the interview. We want you to walk into your interviews feeling confident and excited. In later courses, we'll also add a few role-playing exercises where we'll show you what a technical interview on the subject at hand may look like. To land an interview for a job you want, make sure your resume and online professional presence are in order. This will help you stand out from the other applicants when you apply. Your resume is your first introduction to a new company. Make sure your resume is easy to read and clearly shows the recruiter or hiring manager that you're a strong fit for the job you're applying for. Avoid using lots of filler text in your resume. If you're new to the industry, you may not have a lot to put on your resume, but that's okay. You don't need to list out every piece of software you've used or networking protocol you've ever learned about. Stick to your relevant qualifications. Use a standard resume template and be consistent with your formatting and structure. Proofread your resume and have someone else review it too. You don't want grammar and spelling errors to be your first impression with a potential employer. There's a lot more to say about resumes, so I've included more material in the supplemental reading. You should also make sure you have an up-to-date online presence. Your profile should look professional and have the most current resume, a photo, and updated contact info. Don't forget to do this. Employers are using sites like LinkedIn more and more to reach out to candidates. Now, when you find a job that you want to apply for, you want to learn as much as you can about the role. First place to find this information is in the job description. The description will usually include the role's responsibilities and requirements and some information about the company. Take some time to understand those details and make sure it's a good fit for you. Feel free to ask your recruiter any additional questions you have about the role or the company. Knowing these expectations and requirements will also help you prepare for the interview. For any IT role, make sure that you know the fundamentals of IT really well and spend extra time reviewing any specific areas that are called out in the job description. This program will get you started with some of those fundamentals, like networking and operating systems, but you'll still need to do some research on your own. On top of the specific job requirements, you should also take time to research the company that you're applying to. Learn about the main characteristics of the company, what their primary products or services are, who their customers are, and where they're located. Look for things that are new, interesting, and exciting about the company's future. Try to learn about some of the challenges the company might be facing. If the company has a code of conduct or mission statement online, make sure to read it as it will illustrate what the company prioritizes. Knowing the company's values will help you decide whether it's a company you want to work for. Some of these facts may come up during your interview, either as part of a scenario or in a question by itself, so you'll want to be prepared. Lastly, once you have an interview scheduled, make sure you know where to go, when you need to be there, and what the appropriate attire is for the interview. This particular tip was especially important for me when I first interviewed with Google. At the time, Google was in a temporary space above a restaurant in Ann Arbor, a town I was not very familiar with. There was no sign or address, so when I got there, I had no idea where to go. Thankfully, I arrived with some time to spare, so when I got to the right block for the address, I went around to the back alley, found the address on the fire escape, and climbed it to the second floor. The door was open, and the woman behind it was a little surprised to see me entering. Everyone had a bit of a laugh when I told them I couldn't find the front entrance, and I didn't want to be late for my interview. To this day, my manager still talks about my entrance and says it showed him I was resourceful and determined. Who knows? Maybe that's why they decided to give me the job. A lot of us are quite nervous when we go through our first interviews. There are a lot of things at stake, and it might be hard not to freak out. 
But don't panic. You can do this if you prepare. With interviews, as with lots of other things in life, practice makes perfect. In order to get this practice, try doing mock interviews. Pretending that you're in an interview, even if it's not real, will help you perform your best. You'll be more comfortable thinking out loud and providing clear answers to complicated questions. To do these mock interviews, recruit a friend or family member that's willing to practice with you. Even if they don't know the actual content, they can still help you get into interview mode. By practicing, you'll get used to articulating yourself clearly, which is key to nailing an interview. It's not just about knowing the answers. You also need to share your ideas clearly and concisely. For example, take some general technical subjects like DHCP, DNS, Active Directory, or any other technical area you've learned about. Have a friend or family member ask you to explain the concept to them. What's it for? How's it used? Practicing explanations for a non-technical audience will get you used to breaking down complicated ideas and sharing them in basic terms. They can also create their own troubleshooting scenarios, like asking you to explain what you did the last time you fixed their printer or got their network online. While you're practicing answering questions, you should also practice active listening habits. Maintain eye contact with the other person, nod and understanding when they speak, and ask relevant follow-up questions. If you can, it's great to practice with someone who also plans to interview for similar roles. This way, you can take turns being the interviewer and the interviewee. This will allow you to put yourself in the interviewer's shoes and understand how best to answer each question. Now keep in mind, I don't recommend trying to script or memorize all of your answers. Instead, try explaining the same concepts in different ways. This allows for a more natural conversation and will help you adapt your answers in the actual interview where you won't know the questions. What you can write down and memorize is your elevator pitch. An elevator pitch is a short summary of who you are and what kind of career you're looking for. Make sure to include information like what you're passionate about, how you would like to grow, and what you're looking for in a new role. Practice delivering this pitch to different people and see how it sounds. Even if you have it memorized, stay flexible. You never know in which context you may need it. Writing your first elevator pitch from scratch can be hard. I've included a few examples in the next supplemental reading. When developing your own, make sure that you keep it personal. Again, the key to getting interviews right is to practice, practice, practice. This will help you feel less nervous and show your best self during the actual interviews. When you're interviewing for a technical position, you'll likely have one or more interviews where you'll specifically need to demonstrate your technical skills and knowledge. These interviews may take the form of technical troubleshooting scenarios or explanations of technical concepts and subjects. As we've said, you'll want to have a solid foundation for all the fundamental concepts. Different courses in this program will help introduce you to a variety of concepts related to networking, operating systems, system administration, and security. A good interviewer will push you to the limits of your knowledge. This means it's very likely that during an interview you'll reach a point where you're not sure you know the right answer. This is expected, but you shouldn't just say, I don't know. If you were supporting a user, you wouldn't say it then either. It's okay to admit you're not sure, but you should then explain what you would do to find the answer. As an IT support specialist, you should expect to often face new and unfamiliar problems. Having a good problem-solving strategy is more important than knowing all the answers. If the question you're answering is big and complex, outline how you would break down the work needed to solve the problem before going into the exact details of what needs to be done. If you're thinking about what the best solution could be, share your train of thought with your interviewer so they can follow along. Thinking aloud not only helps the interviewer see your thought process, but it also helps you work through the problem. For example, if you get stuck with a technical troubleshooting scenario, you can try to recap what information you've gathered and state potential causes that can be ruled out with certainty, and then try to figure out what info is still missing to rule out other causes. When you mention concepts or technologies, you should be ready to explain them and articulate why you may choose one thing over another. For instance, if you're working through a networking problem and say something like, the problem might be related to the DNS settings, be ready to explain what DNS is and why it relates to the issue. You should also clarify the question's constraints. Don't assume anything. It's okay and even expected to ask the interviewer follow-up questions to ensure that the problem is correctly framed. Always use the data and evidence you have from the interviewer to inform your next steps. For example, if you need to solve a problem about a user being unable to connect to an internal system, you should ask follow-up questions like what operating system the user is using, how the computer is supposed to connect to the network, what kind of error messages they're getting, whether other users are affected. Your goal is to narrow the scope to find the root cause. If the question is very complex, it might become difficult to follow or explain the solution. In this case, it's useful to take notes and use diagrams to illustrate the problem. You can use this process when it makes sense. It doesn't mean you need to write everything down during an interview. 
Sometimes the answer is straightforward and you can just go ahead and explain it without writing anything down. Being your best self at the interview starts the night before. Being fully rested will help you have more energy, be more focused, and minimize anxiety. So make sure that you get a good night's sleep. Don't try to cram in any last minute studying. This will only make you more anxious. Instead, try to relax and go to bed early. On the day of the interview, eat a proper breakfast. It's never a good idea to be hungry during an interview. Aim to arrive earlier than the scheduled time and give yourself enough travel time for any mishaps along the way. Make sure you're comfortable before you begin the actual interview. Don't be afraid to ask for something if you need it. Use the restroom, grab a glass of water, and ask for a notepad and pen for notes or to illustrate answers when necessary. Be fully present for the duration of the interview. This means turning off your phone to avoid interruptions and giving the interviewer your full attention. Use those active listening skills that you've practiced. Make eye contact, nod to indicate understanding, and ask follow-up questions. Don't forget to be yourself. You want the interviewer to remember you, so let your personality show. Make sure that you highlight what makes you unique. Remember that the interview is also an opportunity for you to ask questions about the things that you care about. You're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. Find out if this is a company that you want to work for and whether you'll be able to achieve your career goals there. Finally, remember to slow down. Most people start talking faster and faster when they're nervous, so be aware of your pace. If you notice that you're getting nervous, pause for a moment to take a few deep breaths and then consciously slow down. Whoa, that's a lot of tips to remember. Feel free to rewatch these videos when your next interview is approaching to make sure that you have these ideas fresh in your mind. Next up, together with Candace, a colleague of mine, we'll do the first of our role-playing exercises showing some of these tips in action. Hi, thanks for coming in. Before I jump into my technical questions, I'd like to know a bit more about you. Tell me why you're interested in this position. When I came into college, I was a pre-med major, and eventually I led down the path to take an introduction to IT course. After that course, I realized how impactful IT was, and I became more curious to like how computers work and why do they break. So I changed my major to IT after that class. After two years of being in the major, I got a job at the IT Service Center where I was able to help students with their computer issues. So I believe having this job will allow me to advance my knowledge and troubleshooting skills, and then also I'll be able to learn new things. Cool, can you, can you tell me what in particular you find appealing about IT? I like IT because it allows me to be very creative and then also allows me to hone in on those problem solving skills. I also like IT because it's very broad, so I feel like the trajectory of my career could be in multiple IT fields, such as like database management, software engineering, IT support, and networking. That's awesome. All right, well, let's get started with our first question then. Um, let's say that you're the only person supporting a help desk and you're currently helping me with an issue when a VP walks in and they ask you for help and they say they have a presentation to give in 15 minutes. How would you handle this situation? So I want to prioritize the issues based on severity. Um, it seems like the VP issue is a little bit more time sensitive. So I would ask you if it's OK if I would help out the VP. OK, that's fair. I'm OK with that. Now, how would you help the VP? So I will want to get the VP up and running as soon as possible. So I will offer them a spare laptop. And then in the meantime, I'll be able to fix their computer while they're at the meeting. OK, great. So now let me rewind for a second. Let me change things up. So what if you were helping me and my issue was actually very critical and it was part of a larger issue that was affecting a number of users, say maybe our wireless network was having issues? How would you handle that? So if I was able to help the VP right away, like by offering a spare laptop, then I would do that. But if that's not the case, then I have to let the VP know that the issue that I'm dealing with is a little bit more severe because it affects the business. And I would hope the VP will be a little bit more understanding. And I would probably have to have a coworker come on and help the VP. Or I could tell the VP to probably like reschedule their meeting if that's possible. Okay, great. Yeah, I think that's fair. And you're right. We, we should take into account what's most important to the business in that type of scenario. So good job. So in this scenario, we saw Candace deliver her elevator pitch and show why she's passionate about IT and becoming an IT support specialist. We also saw one typical complication of troubleshooting problems, getting priorities right. Time-sensitive issues usually have higher priority, but issues that are preventing a large number of users from getting work done should be dealt with first, even if the person asking for help is a director or a VP. That's it for now. See you again at the end of the next course. Congratulations on finishing this lesson from the Google IT Support Certificate. Access the full experience, including job search help, and get the official certificate by clicking the icon or the link in the description. 
Watch the next lesson in the course by clicking here and subscribe to our channel for more lessons from upcoming Google Career Certificates.